A head-on collision between a passenger bus and a heavy-duty vehicle in Kombe along the Sangmeli Mambalmayo stretch leaves 15 dead and 10 badly injured, blamed on reckless driving. Governor Felix Ngelengeli assists the wounded in hospital. Memories of the Mbankolo mudslide, which claims 28 souls, linger on as survivors remain reminiscent of that dark Saturday night one year ago. Vegetation has replaced the rubble, but the pain and grief for the disease and three missing persists. A swift shift to vocational training essential in enhancing employability and personal development. Minister Isa Chiroma Bakari launches the academic year in the sector with emphasis laid on the integration of artificial intelligence in all fields of study. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. Thanks for joining us. I am Esther Kima. We begin our 30 minute newscast on a sad note where 15 persons have died and 10 others battling for survival after a ghastly road accident in Kombe. occurred following a head on collision between a commercial bus and a heavy duty vehicle. The governor of the South region, Felix Ngelengele, has been on the side to ensure free medical care is provided to the injured, hospitalized. Clarence Aze reports on the tragedy. According to eyewitness account, the fatal accident occurred at about 7.30 a.m. this Wednesday at a bend in Kumbe. The direction of the truck was from Yawundi, while the bus was from Samlima. I only heard a loud noise, and when I turned and went closer, I saw a man screaming, and I couldn't do anything to save them since I was alone. So I alerted my children who came and immediately started rescuing those who were still alive. On the side, the rubble of the heavy-duty truck and the bus tell of how violent the collision was. Informed South Governor Felix Ngelengele, alongside the commander of the South Gendarmerie Legion, the regional delegate for national security, and Jai and Lobo Ezio quickly rushed to the side of the hecatomb to assess the situation. Accident was very tragic. The outcome is very heavy. We recorded close to 15 persons declared dead. We will plead with the Minister of uh, Public Works for this section of the road to be adjusted because each month we are recording such accidents. The 15 dead bodies are lying in the mark of the Samilima Referral Hospital and the 10 survivors are battling with threatening injuries at the emergency unit of the same health facility. Governor Felix Ngelengele has instructed that they be administered medical care free of charge. Extend our condolences to the bereaved and courage to the injured. In other news, vocational training centers across Cameroon have officially begun the 2024-2025 academic year today. Launched by the Minister of Employment and Vocational Training, Isa Chiruma Bakari, this year's focus is vocational training in the era of artificial intelligence. Integrating the evolutionary technology in training programs will guarantee self-employment and job market assimilation. Emmanuel Avemue has the details. Artificial intelligence changing the narrative for these trainees in diverse vocational training fields. The digital tool has become their new companion, easing the learning process and opening them up to the global world. To detect any fault, we do not need to dismantle the car. This device helps us detect the fault using AI. I have built this health monitor capable of measuring body temperature, heartbeat and oxygen saturation. It can send an alert message to a health professional for intervention. The new school year for vocational training in Cameroon is thus anchored on AI, described as a ticket to the future since it can be integrated in all fields. Since two years, we introduced AI in all fields of study to ensure that trainees are competent upon graduation. Embracing such technology officials believe will save vocational training from becoming obsolete and enable trainees explore fields like cybersecurity, robotics and more. Vocational training is the most important tool to fight against poverty and unemployment of the youth. We have a possibility to create wealth and good. You have to take your own responsibility, being the creator of your own future. A journey of skill acquisition and self-development. 
job creators instead of job seekers is paying off in Cameroon today. Fields that had hitherto been neglected at captivating a good chunk of trainees who now opt for auto mechanics, woodwork and interior design courses. Vocational training centers, though still in want of adequately equipped workshops, have produced outstanding trainees. Beatrice Ngum trailed three of these graduates. Here's a report on their exploits. Meet Eric Achu, a CEO in his 40s, trained at the Community Technical and Commercial College, Kotek Bafut. Carpentry has been his job for well over 10 years. He has trained 16 people and is making a comfortable living in this vocational field. The good finishing is to put good materials on what you are doing. If not, you cannot have good customers. Soon my children are I'm advising them to do technical education because what I'm gaining today is because of technical. At Olezwa, no mechanical breakdown scares Price Tiwa. The youth spent two years in a vocational school and upon graduation was recruited in this garage. I have a back in automobile mechanic and two years in a vocational school. I am now a mechanic. I work here on salary and train students when on internship. Since 2021, many have trusted him with their cars as the list of his apprentices grows. Every time uh, I bring my vehicle here, he give me uh, a lot of satisfaction. Meanwhile, with an advanced level certificate in designing, Melanie Zhang later diverted to general decoration and the women's vocational training center in Koldongo received her. Vocational training has helped me a lot. I am able to fend for myself and help my husband. It's rewarding. These ones are excelling after their vocational training and many more are embracing these fields that are self-employing. A news focus tonight is on the most essential part of a university which helps support study, teaching and research. We're talking here about the library. At the University of Yaoundé Tuswa, law students have a main library on campus which contains about 35,000 books. This number is incommensurate with the demand. Officials, however, say acquiring new material and creating a virtual library are in process. Cynthia Saptala tells us more. Situated at the heart of the campus, it is the destination for those in search of additional knowledge on political science, economics, management, law, and more. The library can help me to learn new things about the subject. As a master's student, I was able to get research ideas from past phases, especially how they approach a particular topic. Created in 2002, the campus library of the University of Yaoundé 2 currently has a capacity of 200 places and possesses about 35,000 educational books for students, lecturers, researchers, and even visitors. La bibliothèque. The library is for the entire university community. In our documentation, apart from published works specific to the university, we also have books of general interest like science, ICT, School authorities say given the high demand, efforts are being made to acquire new material each year. There is budget each year to buy new books and heads of departments send us a dear list. Even students themselves make their request. We consult publishers on new publications. Last year, we had a budget of 5 million for physical books. We have launched a process of digitalization so as to have the virtual library. Constructions for a new library began some years ago. It is projected to be the biggest in Central Africa when complete, a capacity of 1,000 seats with more than 100,000 books, conference halls and a printing press. In the far north region, Berlin days to the start of the academic year, students of the Higher Teacher Training College of the University of Marwa already throng the book rooms available. The classic library has over 14,000 books, dissertations and theses. There is also the Italian and Chinese libraries open to students. Emos Enonyaketagbo reports from the Kongola campus of the University of Marwa. 
Lushinwa Okotidien is being served by the students of the Higher Teachers Training College at the University of Marua, who is having her first lectures on the introduction into the Chinese language. Knowledge is found inside books. We use to ask our students to go there very often, very frequently, to go to the library and uh, we help them with with uh, some uh, skills, read books, to read everything they can find in our library. The documentation center of the Higher Teachers Training College, University of Marwa, counts about 14,000 written materials made available for learners, with about 80 users recorded on a daily basis. Efforts are on the way to digitalize the documentation center with the purchase of softwares so as to provide soft copies of these materials to learners and also for better archiving. And now in Act 3 of our running series on businesses around university campuses, we spotlight documentation centers where secretariat staff play a primordial role in aiding students accomplish their academic work. Trained in secretariat duties and oftentimes exhibiting a mastery in computing systems, they are usually indispensable in the completion of assignments. Romeo Kenyu reports that at the University of Yaoundé 2 Swa, the cost depends on the volume of material requested. They do not only type confidential documents, but they also type notes from students. The different sectaries around the Yaoundé 2 University in Swa have begun witnessing an increase in demand since universities reopened for the new academic year. We are typing uh, the document for around 30 minutes. Is it, if it's the English document, the French document is very easy because we are in the francophone area. And when you are treating a document like the layout and some other modifications, we are taking uh, time according to the document that we have to treat. Softwares like Word and Excel are the most used in typing, although others are needed for specific assignments. Prices vary per the number of pages, and it is often beneficial during moments when defense of theses are organized. We can type a page for 300 francs. Just in case they are in need of it so urgently, you can take 400. At times, do use phones to scan. From every indication, the duties and responsibilities of office assistants cannot be underrated in students' educational life. In this education-related news, preparations ahead of the 75th anniversary of Collège François Xavier Vaut under the theme Vaut's More Than a College, a School of Life, a Family, are heightening in Yaoundé. The event scheduled to take place from November 11 to 17 is an opportunity to showcase the achievements of the school and its educational heritage. At the end of a press briefing today, the USA coordinator of the school's alumni, Christian Mejo Mizenge, outlined their vision. Take a listen. We are hoping to create a federation of an, uh, what, what would essentially be a single alumni association. That way we can organize ourselves so we're not looking for students like we are right now. We could just send a message for everybody to come together and do this. With about 80,000 of former Vox students, if we can federate them in a, in a group where everybody gives 100 francs a month, we should be able to supply everything the school may need in terms of uh, needy students. On to one of our top stories. It is one year and a day since inhabitants of the Mbankolo neighborhood woke up to the bash of a dike leaving 28 persons dead and three missing till date. The mudslide destroyed homes, property and farmland with the survivors getting relief from the state and persons of goodwill. 12 months on, the disaster zone is deserted and covered by vegetation but... The bitter memories of the tragedy are still fresh. Alphonse Abongwa has the details. Vestiges of a bitter past. October 8, 2023, this dike ceded to the pressure of water. A man-made lake dating to the German colonial era existed here. Torrential rainfalls that fateful Sunday weakened the dike, unleashing its fury on the population. Homes, animals and 28 lives got swallowed up in the mudslide. 
three people were declared missing and hundreds homeless. Inhabitants of the area are still recovering from this calamity. We are leaving these memories as though it were just yesterday. We lost a 20-year-old tenant and a house of six studios. The state offered us six months of house rent. After that, it's not been easy at all. C'est difficile même. Municipal and administrative authorities have not been indifferent to the plight of the hundreds of survivors. Yesterday we organized an event for commemoration of this uh, uh, tragedy. The Yaoundé 2 Council, where Mbankolo is situated, has opened its doors to victims wishing to re-establish civil status documents lost in the tragedy. Our office is ready to assist them to establish uh, this document. Despite government's prohibition signs written all over the area, some diehards say they have nowhere to go. The beautiful petals that now envelop this valley of death are a strong symbol that the bitter pitch of Mbankolo is now turning into something brighter and fairer. Something bright and fair is what we hope for the divisional officer for Idabato. That takes us to the southwest region where the divisional officer for Idabato, Roland Iwane, has still been kidnapped. And his kidnappers have been given three days to release the civil administrator and a council staff taken hostage. Last October 1, the governor of the southwest region, Bernard Okalebilai, gave the injunction at a meeting in Idabato where he also suspended all socio-economic maritime activities till their release. Noaya Ben Mudika has the details. Southwest Governor Bena Okalia Bilai came to Idabate to see for himself the circumstances under which the divisional officer Ewane Roland and council staff Etongo Ismail were kidnapped. First October, two o'clock. They forced the door. They went to the room which one of my staff was sleeping. My name is uh, Etongo. His store accountant. They asked him, Are you Mr. Tongo? The boy said, Yes. They took the boy out, thinking that he's the mayor. They went now directly to the deal. For the governor, the accomplices are already known and cannot intimidate the state. I gave the population of Idabato, who are 95% Nigerian, to release the GO. It is well established that the GO was kidnapped with the complicities of some Algerian businessmen who refuse to comply with the laws of the Republic in their illegal activities. They refuse to pay the taxes. Since maritime activities are the mainstay of the local population, the reinforcement of measures taken by the SDO Fondian are to stamp the authority of the state here and to also guarantee expected results. Back in the nation's capital, CPD members of parliaments from the Northwest region have held government for the ongoing road projects in the region during a meeting with the Minister of Public Works, Emmanuel Ngannou Jumesi. The team, led by Honorable Njingo Musa Questo at the National Assembly, also appealed for the maintenance of communal roads in all the seven divisions of the Northwest. Joyce Kimbi Fuwaju was there now reports for the 7.30 News. It was far from a simple curtsy visit as the head of the Northwest Parliamentary Delegation, Honorable Njingu Musa, reveals. To appreciate and thank him with his collaborator for implementing the vision of the head of state in enslaving the Northwest region. Some have been, many things have been done since the head of state gave instruction to the Minister of Public Works. Some many are still being done. And then we came to also clarify him on those that have to still be done. This working session gave room to a complete review of the road network of the region, a global exercise from division to division with all the seven divisions that make up the Northwest visited. It will serve as a database for government's next road construction programming, a rich presentation that also touch ongoing construction projects in the region, such as Ring Road, Babaju Bamenda, Bamenda Urban Crossing, Urban Roads in Kambe and Ndu, amongst others. This gives reason for the appreciation. We are very, very impressed because he has promised to us 
the meaning of those things that we have presented by all the divisions is going to be put into booking. At least the majority of it will be done as he has promised to us. Their host, Minister Emmanuel Nganun Jumesi, promised the Northwest MPs that he will satisfy their desire by visiting work sites in the region soon. And on today's good news, Cameroon's Code of Military Justice has been elaborated. The five-chapter document enables the court to collect evidence in the line of operation essential in judicial procedures for the prosecution of suspects. The operational guide presented to the ministry today gives soldiers basic knowledge in the defense of the sovereignty and integrity of the nation. Kilian Dandifun has the details. For lack of basic legal knowledge, Mostly third category military staff in official assignments end up in jail for misconduct. Sometimes they fail to collect available evidence that can back up the prosecution case file against suspects of exactions. Such shortcomings in the battlefield now have solutions in the Cameroon Code of Military Justice, a document produced under the instructions of the Minister Delegate at the Presidency in charge of defense, Joseph Betty Asoma. It is a five-chapter legal document. The first deal with constitution because the, the soldier is there, first of all, to defend the constitution and the state. The second deals with law organizing military justice. The third uh, uh, concerns weapons because the soldier, his job consists of manipulating weapons all day long. The fourth deals with judicialization, collecting evidence on the field of operation to bring them before the court to lead to a good a good judgment. Uh, now the last deal with frequency as questions. It was presented Wednesday in Yaoundé to the Secretary General in the Ministry of Defense and Military Chiefs of Staff. The next phase of the document is to get it to the primary audience, the soldiers. Now on to what is trendy on social media. The Max single titled Vivian, authored by Cameroonian artist Prince Aimé, has garnered millions of views, especially on TikTok. The virus sensation emanates from a short a cappella video by Ivorian star De Bordo Likunfa. Larry Snane Porte is amongst the viewers and reports on how it is impacting the artist's career. Little did Ivorian Coupe de Calais superstar De Bodoli Kumfa knew this freestyle would hit the world differently. Doing an a cappella on a popular singer of Cameroonian artist Prince Aimé titled Vivian. Today, millions of users on social media platforms, especially TikTok, have jumped on the freestyle challenge to relate different situations. Vivian, for example, this couple uses it to portray a couple complicity with the Vivian sound. It is not limited just to Ivorians and Cameroonians as other nationals like Nigerians and others have joined the challenge with celebrities dancing to the rhythm. The Vivian Challenge is hitting billions of views on social media platforms, which is equally profitable to owners of monetized accounts, as we see. When many people view your channel and you are gaining followers, what you ought to do is to activate the monetization of your account for you to gain. In Cameroon, most of our artists limit themselves to the effect of birds and the popularity that comes with it. They have to equally be keen on the royalties paid and ensure they have monetized accounts. According to news from some Cameroonian bloggers, a collab is expected from Prince Emi and De Bodoli Kofa. Still in culture, Cameroon's iconic guitarist and singer Otto Marcelin is celebrating gold. 50 years of thrilling the public with enticing tunes, plus heartwarming and soul-searching messages is worth celebrating. A concert to that effect takes place this weekend and tickets are on sale in areas like the Yaoundé Conference Centre. Here's more on the musical show with Otto Marcelin. It is going to be a live concert at the Yaoundé Conference Center come Saturday 12 October 2024 in celebration of my 50th anniversary. It is a celebration of excellence with multi-talented artists like Tonton Ebogo, Ate Bazor, Ate Bas, Pokam Nasis and a host of other amazing surprises. The particularity of these artists is that their music is actually one that is adorable. 
so i feel honored we also have tickets of different prizes and you can get the tickets at different sales points like the yaoundé conference center and santa lucian van ahala and Nguso. the time for the concert is 8 p.m prompt before we take sports, let's have a reading of this National Hydrocarbons Corporation press release. The Glen Cockays SNH reiterates its call for an investigation to be opened following its complaint lodged with the Special Criminal Courts of Yaoundé on the 6th of November 2003. The Executive General Manager of the National Hydrocarbons Corporation informs both the national and international opinion that amid the legal actions against the executives and employees of the multinational Glen call for corruption of foreign agents. A pre-trial hearing was conducted by the Southwark Crown Court in London, United Kingdom on the 9th of October 2024 where a procedural timetable was established. During the hearing, the judge with consensus from the legal representatives of all the parties delineated the key phases of the legal process including dates for evidence exchange for the pre-trial hearings and the trial scheduled for June 2027. The developments from the UK judiciary provides SNH with an opportunity to remind that it is still awaiting the commencement of hearings by the Special Criminal Courts pursuant of its complaint lodged on the 6th of November 2023. It is worth mentioning that the complaint by SNH is subsequent to Glencore's conviction of the Southwark Crown Courts with a ruling dated the 3rd of November 2023. The Executive General Manager of SNH maintains optimism that the Cameroonian accomplices of these criminal acts recognized by Glencoe will be swiftly identified and punished in accordance with the relevant provisions of the Cameroonian Penal Code. It is signed by the Executive General Manager of SNH, Adolf Mudike. Now on to sports. The indomitable Lions of Cameroon have had their fourth training session at the Yaoundé Nguaikele Stadium today. Prior to Friday's Afghan qualify against Kenya, head coach Mark Breeze is expected to fill in an 11-month squad that will bring victory. But what indomitable Lions should we then expect to face the Harambe Stars? Cyril Nwazake met some football analysts. Now reports. Football analysts argue that head coach Mark Brees is yet to set up a stable 11-man squad. They have nonetheless predicted the system of play he is common with. Coach Mark Brees has demonstrated uh, that he has a penchant for the 4-3-3 formation. To deliver the goods for such a system, the rear must be secured. Expect us to have uh, Onana in goal. He is the undisputed number one at present. A stable defense is required. A back four of Chachua at right back, Ngadu and Wu in central defense, and Nuhu at left back. An intercepting, protective and disrupting midfield will be required to regain possession. Baliba or in holding midfield. Zambo and Gisa and Hongla. Magris called up a cream of attackers. Making a choice won't be easy. We'll probably see Basogog, Mbuemo, and uh, Vincent Nabubakar. The system and players chosen by the head coach will only have to deliver the goods come Friday, analyst whispered. Now, this advertorial to end this newscast, over 3,000 students have graduated from the Santu University Institute. They received their end of training assistance from a cream of personalities, amongst whom was the Minister of State, Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Famendongo. The Santu University Institute offers quality professional training to students from over 15 countries, including South Korea. Pierre Anushka Bita tells us more. <laughs> An oath of honesty, respect and commitment to their institution as they set out for the labor market. These graduates of the Siantu University Institute are holders of licence, bachelor's and professional master's degrees. From 2022 to 2024, the Siantu University Institute produced 3,900 graduates representing a success rate of 98.14% in the bachelor professional master's and engineering cycles. 
We find the University of Bamenda, Boya, Douala, Yaoundé 1 through the Higher National Institute of Engineering and University of Yaoundé 2 and short the academic supervision of lectures. Created in 1991, the Higher Education Institute initiated courses for English-speaking students in 2005. Today, the university partners with major foreign academic institutions and trains students from other horizons. Les étudiants formés ici. Students trained here come from 15 countries. Southern Korea is one of these nations. Proof that the Seattle University Institute has become a place to be. Added to this, a partnership agreement has been signed between the Seattle Institute and the International School of Business Engineering based in Paris. Quality and professionalized education is not a subject of propaganda here. Students testify of the privilege they enjoy. J'ai été agréablement comblé par le sérieux et la qualité de la formation. I am pleased with the quality Nous of avons training. les mêmes cours, We have les the mêmes lectures, équipements de laboratoire et les enseignants que nos camarades Three months after my training, I was recruited by the second Yaoundé. state institution le for the construction of the new headquarters of the National Assembly. Eminent actors of academia from all ten regions of the country converged on the Siantu University campus in Yaoundé as laureates received received their transcripts and attestations that ends this edition of the 730 news in which you merely heard that it is a dark wednesday at the level of the south region ahead on a collision between a passenger bus and a heavy duty vehicle in Kumbe along the san miliman bamayo stretch has left 15 persons dead and 10 badly injured the accident Ngelengele has been to the Sangmanima Hospital to ensure that the wounded receive free medical attention. More news comes up at 8.30 p.m. Romeo out, Tris and Gok. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Code willing, stay tuned to our programs on CRTV and on CRTV News. Good night. Thanks for watching.